Welcome learners to today's lesson of multiplication and division of polynomials. Let's start off our lesson with a did you know. Did you know that algebra is used in many fields to solve problems? The fields include engineering, physics, finance, and computer science. This means that algebra is used to solve and model real life problems. For example, in physics, Algebra is used to calculate the amount of force needed to move an object. So let's look at today's lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to multiply polynomials by monomials that are constant, multiply polynomials by monomials that are not constant, divide polynomials by monomials that are constant, and divide polynomials by monomials that are not constant constant. Let's look at today's concept map and see what our lesson is going to be focusing on. So we are going to be focusing on multiplication of polynomials where we are going to look at multiplication of by constants and no multiplication by non-constants. Then we are also going to be looking at division of polynomials where we are going to be focusing on division by constants and division by non-constants. Let's look at the pre-knowledge that you are supposed to have or things that you should be able to do already. You should be able to recognize and identify conventions of writing algebra, multiplication by one digit numbers, the distributive properties of numbers, and multiply and divide powers of the same base, as well as multiplying fractions, all right, let's do some practice. So conventions of writing algebra. Let's look at this expression that is given. Now remember, when we are writing our expression, we need to arrange it accordingly, and that is either in ascending order or descending order. So in this case, we are going to arrange it in descending order. So this means that if I were to rewrite this properly, then I would start with the variable that has the highest exponent. And in this case, the highest exponent is the exponent 5. So we are going to start by saying negative 7x exponent 5 plus 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 2. So I have written my, ex my expression in descending order, looking at the exponents to the variables. Let's look at this next one here. So we also need to start with the highest exponent when we're looking at the variables. And in this case, that is exponent 4. So I am going to start my expression with 8p exponent 4 plus 6p cubed minus p squared minus 3p plus 1. And that is our expression written in descending order. Now let's look at the following expressions and try to see how many terms are in the following expression. Now the expression given as is, how many terms do we see there? That is two terms. But now remember, if we are asked to simplify this expression first, then we would start by simplifying the expression first. And because these are like terms, it means that we can add them. So we are going to say 3p squared plus 2p squared, and that will give us 5p squared. Now, if we've already simplified it, then that means we only have one term. But before we simplified it, we actually had the two terms. Okay, let's look at the next one. So again, how many terms are in this expression? Now, before we can simplify the expression, let's look at how many terms there are. We have one, two, three, four terms. So those are four terms. But let's quickly simplify it and then see how many terms there are when it is simplified. So we are going to look for the like terms. And the like terms here are the x exponent 5 and we have another x exponent 5. And because they are like terms, we are going to add them. So that is going to be 9 plus 6. That gives us 15x exponent 5. And then we also have x cubed as like terms and x cubed as like terms. So we are going to add those as well. So we have a negative 1x cubed 
minus a 3x cubed, and that is going to give us a negative 4x cubed. And how many terms do we have here? We only have one, two, and those are two terms. Let's move on to multiplication by one digit number. So we have there 34 multiplied by three. Now remember 34 can be broken up to 30 plus four. So what we can do here to make the calculation easier is that we can take this one digit and multiply it by each of the numbers that come from 34. So I would have the three multiplied by four and also 3 multiplied by 30. Now 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. And we have 3 multiplied by 30 and that is equals to 90. So it means that we can say here that 12 plus 90 and that becomes an easier calculation to calculate and we know the answer there will be 120. Two. So that's when we are multiplying with one digit. We can break up the number into two numbers and multiply each of those numbers with that one digit. What about the distributive property? Just to remind you there, if I have a number outside of a bracket and I have two numbers inside the bracket, then this means that this number can distribute to both of them. So that will be three multiplied by four and that will be three multiplied by five. So now three multiplied by four is 12 and three multiplied by five is 15. When we add 12 and 15, our answer is 27. To show that it is the same calculation, we know that four plus five is nine and three multiplied by nine is 27. Then we have multiplication of powers of the same base. Now remember, if I have powers that have the same base, then what is going to happen to the exponents? I am going to add the exponents. That means that if we have a squared multiplied by a exponent five, our answer is going to be a exponent seven because we've added those exponents. What about division of powers of the same base? Now, if I have p exponent 6 divided by p exponent 2 or p squared, then we know that because they have the same base, we are going to subtract those exponents, giving me an answer of p exponent 4. Then we have multiplying fractions. As we know there, I have 4 sixth multiplied by one half or we can say that we are taking four sixths and we are actually just dividing it by two our answer there is going to be four divided by okay sorry our answer is going to be the four twelfths and when we look at four twelfths that is not in its simplest form remember we need to simplify every fraction into its simplest form and we do that by finding the highest common factor. And the highest common factor between 4 and 12 is 4. So we are going to divide the numerator by 4 and divide the denominator by 4. That is going to give us an answer of 1 third. And that is going to be the final answer. Let's look at some keywords that we're going to be using during this lesson. So we are going to be talking about monomials and that is an expression that has one term and non-negative exponents of the variables or just a variable if there's one. For example, we have the 3x squared and that is a monomial. Now binomials are an expression with two terms and non-negative exponents of the variables. For example, we have the 3x squared plus four, so those are two terms. And then we're also going to be talking about a trinomial, and that is an expression with three terms and non-negative exponents of the variables. And for example there, we have three x squared plus four x minus two. So those are the keywords that we are going to be using. And remember, when we are talking about a constant, we are talking about a two, a number that remains the same, that doesn't have a variable that might change the value of that number. So that is a constant there, and that can be part of our polynomial.
Let's quickly go to an ad break and then we'll see you just now. 